Hello there and welcome back to Arctic Retro and uh, today I have another Commodore machine for you. It's this uh, black Commodore C16. As you can see this machine doesn't look uh, particularly good uh, right now and it is actually not working so this is gonna be a repair video. The Commodore 16 was uh, released in 1984 and it was uh, supposed to replace uh, the Commodore VIC-20 and to be a cheaper alternative to the Commodore 64 and it is uh, from the same family of computers as uh, the Commodore 116 and the Plus 4. The machine wasn't very popular and uh, they didn't sell uh, many of those and uh, actually it was uh, discontinued uh, rather quickly. Still it is a nice machine to have in uh, the collection and uh, I don't have uh, a Commodore 16 from before, I have a Plus 4. Let me just take a moment here and uh, thank my sponsor PCBWay. They are sponsoring this video and uh, I got a lot of uh, PCBs uh, produced by them which I found on uh, their shared project site and uh, I must say the quality is really good so I can really recommend PCBWay. If you visit PCBWay.com you can uh, upload your Gerber files and uh, get an instant quote on producing your PCBs and the uh, prices are really affordable. Besides PCB manufacturing, they can also do CNC machining and 3D printing, including injection molding. They also do PCB assembly and advanced PCB. So go ahead and visit PCBWay.com and check out their services. This has only 16K of RAM and um, it is missing a few keys as you can see. Three keys have been broken off. Uh, I actually got two of those here, but I'm missing um, the third, the number two key. I also got the matching cassette player for uh, this computer because um, the cassette players of the <laughs> Commodore 64 and VIC-20 is not compatible because they use a different plug. But otherwise uh, they look the same. Uh, besides the color and they work the same as well. Okay, so the goal of this video is to try and repair this machine and uh, fix all uh, the things with the keyboard and everything and uh, do some restoration work on it, of course, uh, also on uh, the cassette player. So let's get on with that. Besides uh, the broken off keys, uh, the machine is in good shape. It's uh, quite dirty. So this is the side and uh, as you can see it has two uh, joystick ports which are also these um, small DIN connectors uh, and uh, also the power input is uh, a much simpler one. It's uh, just a 9 volts input and, uh, and not the one that's used on um, the Commodore 64 that has uh, both 9 volts AC and 5 volts uh, DC. Before I start, uh, I actually gonna do a brief test. I didn't get the original power supply with the machine, but I have this uh, generic um, nine volt power supply here. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, marked as uh, nine volt ZX spectrum, but uh, this machine takes nine volts um, DC input. So uh, this will work. We just need to find the correct polarity. And uh, this one has this plug where you can uh, uh, change the polarity uh, but uh, I uh, think this is correct now it's uh, center negative just hook it up turning on and there was a brief uh, <laughs> flash in the power LED so I think there is actually some bad contact because if I touch the contact then uh, the power LED is on, but if I uh, let go, 
yeah, if I will wiggle a bit, it turns off. So obviously there's some bad contact uh, on this um, power connector. So I think I'll need to uh, address that uh, first of all. And if I turn on the TV, there's no signal, but uh, there's a lot of uh, audio noise, as you can hear. <laughs> so something is going on here. <laughs> That's the test. Now I'm gonna open up this machine and uh, remove the motherboard and uh, take a look at it. And uh, it got three screws in the front as is usual with these uh, bread bin cases. I'm just gonna remove uh, the keyboard and um, leave it for later and uh, the motherboard is uh, quite small compared to a Commodore 64 so um, this was a cost reduced version of uh, these machines and thereby it doesn't have the same features as uh, Commodore uh, 64 and WIC 20. For example it doesn't have a, a user port. It has an expansion port for a cartridge but uh, not the user port. So that actually limits uh, <laughs> what you could use th this machine for. That's the tiny little um, motherboard and it looks uh, nice. Can't see anything wrong with it uh, at first glance. Has the regular stuff. There's the CPU, it's a 8501R1 and this is compatible with the 6502 CPU and some of these machines uh, even had a 7501 uh, CPU depending on uh, the revision and I guess this uh, largest chip here with the heat compound is uh, the TED chip which is responsible for the, the graphics and the audio and here we have uh, three ROM chips and then some memory chips and yeah <laughs> not really much to it uh, on this one. I'm gonna take uh, the case and uh, clean it up uh, in the meantime. So for now just uh, let me take a look at uh, this. Uh, oh there's some uh, shield on the back as well. Need to remove that and uh, yeah it seems to be soldered in or maybe not. No it's not soldered you just uh, bend those tabs and it's uh, not very hard either. I can use my <laughs> fingernails. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take off this side panel here as well. So it's not in the way. Two screws for that. So there was some uh, connection issue with uh, power contact. Uh, let's take a look at the back side here and see if we can see anything wrong. So the solder joints, they um, actually look all right i can't see anything cracked or anything but i'm gonna touch them up anyway and uh, maybe it's the contact itself that uh, is not performing very well it's um, it can be dirty it can be bent in so that the, the side contact doesn't touch uh, the contact when you stick it in yeah there's obviously something wrong because if i uh, use my multimeter on continuity so I have the pin on all the time, but if I move it a little bit without lifting it, you hear it breaks the connection. So <laughs> yeah, try a little bit uh, fresh uh, solder on these uh, solder joints. So that's cooking. <laughs> Clean up that uh, old <laughs> flux. Yeah, that's much better. Also, gonna use a little um, oxid clean in the contact. Just as well, uh, take the other contacts too. Alright, 
else I'm gonna clean off this old thermal paste. Replace it with some new when I uh, finish with this machine. And that reveals the MOS logo. MOS was uh, actually the chip maker that Condor used uh, back in the day and uh, after a while they actually bought the whole MOS company. And uh, yeah, that's why most of the Commodore machines have uh, most branded chips and uh, some uh, regard uh, the most chips to be of bad quality, which uh, of course might be the case. That's why many of these old machines uh, stops working after all these years. And uh, usually it's some chip that uh, has stopped working. And that revealed the uh, MOS uh, 8360R2 uh, produced in uh, week 40 of 84 and uh, that is the TED chip. And problem with uh, these uh, plus 4 and 16 machines are that the TED chip uh, stops working and uh, it's hard to find the replacements. There are no modern replacements and it's uh, hard to source uh, working chips. I'm gonna try and bend out the uh, the contact, the plus side of the contact uh, with a small screwdriver. I think it came out. Also have this small uh, file thing that uh, I can use to, to scrape off the contacts because it's not easy to reach in there with uh, something else. Okay, so now uh, I can test. Um, we can see uh, this board only has a 7505 uh, voltage regulator because it doesn't need a 12 volt rail on this one, like the Commodore 64. This is a transistor, this is the voltage regulator, and here's a big <laughs> 5 watts uh, resistor. I'm not really sure what that's used for, maybe it's uh, some sort of safety measure. All the caps uh, look good, no bulging as I can see, but I might uh, just recap this if uh, I get it to work. So this is a fairly simple design. Uh, when I got the machine and tested it, the fuse was actually blown, so I have replaced that one. So uh, that indicates uh, that something happened with this machine. Uh, with uh, regards to the input power. Um, all right, let me try and power this up now and see if it uh, actually works, if we can find some uh, voltages on the board. At least the contact is a lot tighter now. So let me turn it on. Nothing blows. So I'm gonna measure um, this voltage regulator. So it has 8.8 .8 volts actually input. I'm gonna turn this around. Uh, DC 8.8 .8 volt in and uh, out. Let's try not and short this. And out it's 4.9, so um, that's uh, normal voltage. Let's try and measure on some of the chips and see if uh, they got the correct voltage as well. Not really sure uh, the pinouts, but uh, let's uh, usually pin one is uh, plus five volts and uh, the last pin here is uh, ground, yes. 4.9 on that one, so uh, yeah, the voltages are okay on this board. The power contact seems to be uh, much more stable now and uh, I turned it on and uh, let's check if the TED chip has some um, power. It's the uh, last pin on this side and pin 4. Yeah, 4.9 volts so uh, it has power. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, to test with another uh, TED chip. I have this uh, Commodore Plus 4 that uh, I haven't uh, had a chance to take a look at yet. Uh, it has a note here says black screen and uh, I'm actually gonna try this TED chip here and uh, see if uh, that actually works even if uh, it's a black screen it can still work because uh, that can be the CPU for example. Alright let me just take this out it is uh, 
marked 4484 and besides that it is the same chip okay in with uh, the other one it's full of uh, <laughs> thermal paste this uh, chip uh, I wiped it off before I took it out but uh, still dirty okay <laughs> hey <laughs> all right so uh, we got the picture <laughs> so uh, it is actually the TED chip that is gone on this one and uh, this one in the other non-working machine is actually working so <laughs> yeah at least I have one chip for <laughs> two machines <laughs> now <laughs> So that was actually a little bit too easy. This uh, video is uh, getting shorter than... <laughs> well, <laughs> what can I say? Sometimes uh, you get lucky and sometimes uh, you have a hard time fixing these machines. Anyway, now I'm going to use this uh, TED chip in this machine. I'm actually going to clean up the machine and then we can take it for a uh, a test later there might be other things that uh, is not uh, functioning 100% uh, so we'll see but for now uh, the motherboard is uh, fixed I'm gonna clean it off with some alcohol all over the place uh, I'm gonna take a look at the keyboard uh, next so I'm gonna remove the keyboard from uh, the case plastic so uh, that I can clean everything the keyboard uh, doesn't look uh, too bad actually, it's uh, actually not uh, very dirty, little dust, but uh, very little actually. However, the three keys that are broken off, uh, it's actually the stem or the plunger that has been uh, broken off. So um, yeah, I have replacements because I have a couple of uh, complete keyboards for spares. Uh, I have the two... Um, those two keys and I'm missing one so um, I need to figure out the solution for that but uh, yeah I'm gonna remove all um, the keys anyway just to be able to clean them so here you see uh, the working key plunger and uh, here's the two broken off so uh, I actually need to take off all the keys to key to clean them and also to take off the back plate so that I can remove the broken plungers I have spares so uh, yeah oh they are really hard uh, stuck down to the plungers <laughs> okay now for some uh, cleaning Taking off uh, the back plate is uh, done by removing all these um, little screws and uh, that's a lot of work if you don't have an electric screwdriver like this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to uh, solder off uh, the wires for the shift lock key uh, because uh, the plungers I need to take off is on this side. So, uh, yeah. And uh, that's not easy because uh, the wires are bent around and then soldered in. And if you <laughs> use too much heat on these, you destroy uh, the caps lock because you melt the plastic. All right, that went smooth. Uh, they wasn't threaded uh, through some holes, so uh, just uh, lift them straight up. All right, so uh, now I can actually clean a little bit around the PCB as well. Um, this has carbon pads, so you can't clean them with um, alcohol because then you rub off the conductive material. But this keyboard is in very good shape, so uh, I'm just gonna rub over with um, a dry cotton pad. The broken plungers are these two. <laughs> so I actually found a model for uh, these uh, keyboard plungers and uh, I printed a few uh, on my 3D printer and uh, 
yeah, the result looks okay, but uh, uh, they are probably not as accurate as uh, the original ones. But they actually fit uh, real good. Uh, just need to file a little bit around the edges because uh, it's hanging a little bit in the plastic around. And then we can uh, transplant this uh, rubbery thing, the contact. You do like that, you just pull on uh, the end and uh, twist it a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice fit. So now that's a real good fit. It's uh, sliding very nicely up and down. For uh, the other plunger, I'm just gonna use this original one, which I have a lot of spares of, so I'm... So now I know I can actually use a 3D printed one, but I need to test uh, first and see if it works as expected. So that was it. I'm gonna assemble this keyboard again and uh, test it. So this is uh, the 3D printed plunger and uh, what I'm concerned about is that it is uh, pulled down too far all the time. But I'll test it out and I actually got a 3D printed um, key here for the missing number two. As you can see it's uh, almost the same color and uh, yeah you find the models for almost everything on the Thingiverse so I'm gonna go for this even though I am waiting for an original key to arrive soon I'm gonna test this one. So let's see now does it work? This works just fine, great! Okay so this keyboard seems to be working just fine and the 3D printed plunger is alright. It is time to assemble uh, the keyboard. Start with the homemade key, uh, number two. <laughs> but this is taking far too long, putting all the keys uh, one by one. So instead, uh, let's uh, do something like this. All right. <laughs> well, that's uh, a little better, but uh, that's nearly not enough. So uh, let's try once more. Alright, that's a lot better, <laughs> but still uh, one uh, key is missing and uh, it's this one, uh, the number 9. And uh, the reason for that is that the old um, key plunger uh, part <laughs> that was broken off is uh, still inserted here and it's a bit hard to get it out, so I need to find some solution for that. So it's very tight between the part and the key, so... <laughs> Not really sure if I need to drill it out or what I'm going to do. Well, it turns out that I could just push it right in and it disappeared and inside the hole. So yeah, nice. Before I assemble the machine, I actually want to do some uh, diagnostics testing. And I have this um, Diag 264 uh, ROM chip that you um, insert instead of the kernel ROM and uh, it will run some diagnostics. Uh, you of course need some test uh, testing harness uh, loopback adapter and things like that but I don't have that for uh, this machine so we will run the test uh, anyway. Insert uh, the testing ROM. Okay, so turning on, let's see what the test says. Alright, so there's some um, patterns on the screen. Testing the RAM. The ROM tests. Keyboard. Okay, so it says bad, so uh, that's probably because you need a, a terminator or a loopback thingy on the keyboard. Same with the joysticks, it won't test those. And the cassette and the uh, porch can't be tested either. And that's the sound test. <laughs> Some graphics and TED chip tests. Then a little uh, fresh uh, thermal paste onto uh, this heatsink, uh, which goes uh, onto the um, 
that chip and uh, also the other chips uh, might benefit from a little bit of a heat sinks uh, so I'm gonna use a couple of small ones that will fit uh, under here looking and uh, working Commodore 16 this actually looks like brand new now I can't see anything there's not even a scratch uh, mark or anything here <laughs> so that's really nice all I need is this um, number two key and uh, I actually have one uh, coming in the mail soon all right, so now I got uh, two of the three uh, 264 based uh, TED based machines in my collection and I'm still missing the 116. All right, so next I'm gonna take a look at this uh, cassette player. Uh, this uh, doesn't look very nice, so I'm gonna clean it up and test if it works or not. This cassette uh, player has seen better days. As you can see, there are some black stains. Not really sure what that is, but uh, it's uh, not uh, terrible, uh, so I think this will clean up nicely, except for uh, maybe the black stains. It's been a while since I uh, <laughs> restored one of these because, uh, yeah, let's uh, face it, uh, not many of these are in use anymore. <laughs> Oh boy, it's uh, dirty down here, <laughs> but I think it's uh, mostly dust, so I'm gonna take this and blow it free of the dust. I uh, lost the sound from the external microphone there for a minute, sorry about that, but uh, now I'm back again and uh, I blew away the dust, so now I'm just gonna clean away uh, the rest of the dirt here quickly. Also clean um, the heads, there's two heads, this is the read and the right head and this is a erase head. There's a couple of stains that looks uh, more like rust, like over here, so I'm uh, gonna battle that uh, afterwards. I think most of the dust and dirt is gone and I'm cleaning the head a little bit. I'm using uh, isopropanol uh, alcohol here. The rust stains, I'm just scraping them off. Uh, get the most of the rust uh, away and I'm not gonna overdo the, the work on this uh, cassette deck and I'm not gonna use it uh, much I guess and then I just uh, clean off and uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of a WD-40 on a cotton swab here These stains uh, are uh, not possible to get uh, rid of because I think that's just uh, some reaction that has taken place with the uh, paint on the plastic. So uh, I tried both uh, alcohol and WD-40 and everything, but uh, it's, uh, it's not some stains. You can't scrape it off. <laughs> I tried that as well, but uh, yeah, so that just has to stay like that. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough with the cleaning of this uh, cassette and uh, yeah, it's uh, better than it was, but uh, still not perfect. Good enough for Norway. Time to test and uh, I don't actually have uh, some games or any cassettes for uh, this machine. I'm just trying with a Commodore 64 tape. It won't load it, but at least it will show that it is uh, starting to load. So. Load. 
at least it is uh, spinning. <laughs> So it didn't find anything on that Commodore cassette, but uh, I made a little program and I'm uh, gonna test uh, saving actually. I'm gonna call it uh, Arctic. Press play and record. So I have this uh, old cassette I'm recording on. <laughs> All right, so it finished uh, saving. Uh, let me rewind then and uh, yeah, try and load it again. Just uh, delete the program first and then uh, load. All right, so uh, <laughs> break error. <laughs> All right, so now it actually found Arctic. <laughs> yeah, that worked. I actually uh, wrote another program because I tried again and then that's the program. So then this uh, tape drive is working somewhat at least, uh, might be uh, some uh, misalignment of the, the head, but um, that can be adjusted with this little hole here. You can use a little screwdriver and you use a little program to, to adjust the azimuth. Alrighty, I have uh, tuned the lights down a little bit because uh, now I'm in the mood for some games. I connected the Pi 1541 device, that is a 1541 uh, floppy drive emulator running on a Raspberry Pi and this works very good, uh, very nice. <laughs> Since this uh, machine runs uh, basic Wii 3.5 it actually has more uh, commands than the Commodore 64. For example F3, uh, it's a shortcut for the directory command. I have a folder here called C16, so I'm gonna go into that, but uh, to do that you either need to use the buttons on, uh, on the 1541 device or you can use this file browser. So um, I'm gonna uh, load that and if you know the Commodore 64 you actually know that you load uh, from diskette by uh, typing in this command here. FB16 is the version for uh, this machine. So FB16, uh, 0,8,1. And there you go, it's loaded, but you can also type uh, dload FB16. That's a little bit easier. And then I just simply run this and it will show the content on the memory card and I can use the, either a joystick or um, the keyboard to navigate this. Go down to the C16 folder and now it has changed the directory and uh, here some uh, games I downloaded from uh, Plus4 World. I don't know anything about um, these games <laughs> and I also don't have a, a joystick uh, that fits this machine since it uses uh, those um, non-standard joystick uh, ports. The problem with the C16 is that uh, it only has 16k RAM so there aren't many good games for it, uh, not like on the Plus 4. So let's see this, uh, try this Pac-Man. Pac-Man is always fun. <laughs> Okay, Soft presents Pac-Man. Press fire. Well, I don't have a joystick. I can't press fire over at space. I don't know what kind of keys you actually use to play. All right, <laughs> D. Now I couldn't figure out what uh, was uh, <laughs> the correct keys. All right, let's try this one. Hypersport. Okay, so I don't know what this is. Some kind of sport. I don't have a joystick, so I select the keyboard. <laughs> All right, so um, 
what's this? <laughs> Swimming. How do you play? Okay, so it's the O and I, <laughs> and I'm gonna swim as fast as I can. I'm lagging behind now, obviously. <laughs> breathe. Okay, how to breathe? Q is breathe. Just as I was uh, finished uh, filming this uh, video, the missing keycap actually came in the mail and uh, here it is. Let's do a little, uh, <laughs> little unboxing scene here. Very well packed. So uh, this needs to go in right away. Look at that, perfect. Now this machine is 100% uh, complete. And the sender of this key was uh, none other than uh, Jan Beta and he was kind enough to send me one as he has a couple of spare keyboards. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate that, so thanks a lot. All right, I think that was uh, it for this video. I didn't really research what uh, are the best games for this machine. I will figure that out later. But the main goal of this video was to get the machine working and uh, now it is an, a great uh, little machine in my <laughs> collection of Commodores. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And thanks a lot to my supporters at Patreon. See you, bye bye.